Hi there, Janet Fritz here for Galaxy Girl Creations. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to Follow a Sketch February, which I'm playing along with Sandy or State Goddess over at Scrapping Reflections, or actually her channel is State Goddess. Um, <laughs> but you can go and check out all of the inspiration on her Facebook group, Scrapping Reflections. The sketch we are using is from Kim Kimacro, um, K-I-M-A-C-R-O. Uh, anyway, I'm starting out with a piece of paper that I am doing a little mixed media on and I am borrowing some mixed media from a friend of mine because I was at my retreat and I didn't bring my mixed media. I knew a couple of friends were bringing theirs and they were happy to share and I didn't have a ton to do. Um, I only brought the ones that I knew for sure I would use. And so I am using this one. Now my center area is going to get covered by papers, just like in the sketch, but my outer areas, I wanted um, my paper to be this kind of beigey goldish color. And then I am using some additional mixed medias to splatter across the top. This one is Chroma Mist from uh, Brutus Monroe, which I have never used before, but I really like the way that it ends up looking. I kind of wish I had done the top when it was more dry, like the bottom, because then it doesn't kind of soak in and make those splotches. It, it kind of stays almost dimensional on the, on the layout, but it's the first time I've used Chroma Mist, so I think it's really cool. Um, I might have to end up investing in a little bit, We'll see. Um, I do have a lot of mixed media at home, so I'm not sure that I need more, but you know, I always need more. Okay, so that is um, my mixed media all finished. And I was inspired by January's Baby Got Scraps challenge to continue using some of my scraps. Now I've been trying to use up a lot of my uh, kit conspiracy stuff for the month of February, but in this case, I just pulled out a bunch of random papers in reds and tans to create this layout and these are all out of my scrap bins i am going to go ahead and use my punch to punch um, a nice border that has a scallop on it this is my favorite punch and very 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 hard to find anymore so i'm not even going to try and put a link down below for that because like i said super hard to find this punch anymore but it is from um, x cut or do crafts and uh, I, I did get it on amazon at one time so I like it because it's a larger scallop than what most of the other punches are. So uh, that also that kind of pinky red piece that I'm gluing everything down to is kind of velvety. Um, it's it's not fabric. It's kind of kind of got a bit of a plasticky back back to it, but it is um, velvety, and I thought it was really cool. And I'm doing four photos of the little guy that I take care of. We are at the park, and this is one of his one of his early trips to the park, not maybe not his very first one, but um, at least with me, uh, but one, one of the first ones. And he's really enjoying playing with, playing by the slide and feeling the texture of the bark. And um, they have like a little steering wheel. So he thinks he's driving. Um, he's, he's enjoying that. And just checking out some stuff for the, for not, maybe not the first time. I think this is actually probably his second or third time because um, I ended up having to get shoes for him for his time at the park because I don't like him to go in socks in the park. And so the very first time he wouldn't let me put them on him. At this point, he's got them on, but he's not really 100% sure about wearing the shoes. Uh, so yeah, he's pretty little. He's not even a, a year old in this photo. But um, that little slide that he's standing at the bottom of, he can go down that feet first uh, on his belly so that when he lands at the bottom, there's he lands on his feet. And it's really just like a f two feet long maybe. And so I can start him at the top and by the time I get, like reach around the other side, he's coming out the end so that he doesn't land on his butt or anything like that, which wouldn't be a bad thing anyway. But um, anyway, super cute and he's... He's really smiley in the photos. I wish I could show you the pictures of him smiling, but um, that sorry, that's not an option to to protect uh, his family's privacy. So lots of layers here that I'm doing with my uh, pinky red colors, 
And I'm not against using pink or red for a boy layout, but one of the main reasons I chose this is because the slide or, or the play structure that he's at has these faded red walls, which makes them very pinkish. And so I thought that worked really well. And then when you get the shadows in there, it kind of gets the darkish the dark reddish pink because they're pink walls with shadows on them. And so I thought that worked great. And then the tan, because there's a lot of tan bark and then the interior of the slide is also tan. So I thought those would work well. And that actually brought me to the embellishments that I'm using. I'm going to use a wood set that MK created, but it was for a retreat. So it's not anything that you can get in her shop. This was a given out at my friend Cindy's retreat. So Cindy, thank you for the pieces that I'm going to be using. Um, I use most of them actually all, but I think one piece. So, um, it came out super cute. You guys, my layout is called love you to the core because that is what is written on one of those pieces. So now I'm going to go ahead and work on getting my, um, my layers all glued down. Now in the sketch, she didn't have nearly as many layers as I have, and she's got some banner pieces hanging down. She's also got a diagonal design. I am going with the diagonal design. My um, banner pieces are gonna be represented as a banner in that upper left-hand corner. And there's the colors that I used, some uh, shimmers, vibes, hot fudge, and the chroma mist in silver. And now I am using some, oh, media gloss spray in um i'm not even sure what color that is it might be gilt it might be might not be gilt anyway um here are the wood pieces that i'm using i didn't make you sit through me peeling all the uh protective masking off of the top but i'm going to go ahead and use those i also am going to use this flare piece from mk's one of her monthly embellishment boxes i believe um either that or it came from the advent calendar. I don't have it written down in front of me, but um, that is where that came from. All of these labels are definitely from the advent calendar that she had available in her shop in the fall. And then all of these apple pieces are from Cindy's retreat. So I'm going to go ahead and use all of those up. And I really like the way that that work that that those look, especially with the flattened flare kind of in the indentation of the bite of the apple. I think that's super cute. And um, then I'm also using a bit of this uh, twine. I believe it's from Close to My Heart. It's, um, it's very soft and very thin, but um, not so thin like a piece of thread. So I really like that. It also goes great with the color that I'm using. And then I borrowed a triangular die from a friend of mine that was sitting next to me. And I'm cutting a bunch of these papers uh, in these triangles to go ahead and create some more banner pieces. Um, I want lots of layers up there in that upper left hand corner. I think that's going to be super cute. <clears throat> and then I'm going to go ahead and ink everything up. I've, I've been inking things up in some black soot distress ink. So I'm going to just continue to ink up those pieces. Now that does take me a bit of time and I think I left a lot of that in here, but I don't, I didn't make you sit through all of the cutting. So, um, just know that I cut a lot of those little triangles, but doing it in the little tiny die cutting machine, uh, my, the Sizzix Sidekick worked out perfectly. It's just the right size. And then I did die cut a couple of those labels as well to bring in some of the more tan colors because I didn't have... Um, a lot of that tan left over. I think I just had, well, I had some of the polka dot one left over, but I didn't have some of these darker ones left over. So I'm going to go ahead and use those labels for that. And I think that that comes out really cute as well. Then also ink up all my labels that are going into that cluster in the um, upper left of the photos there. Just inking those up with a little bit of black soot also just to give extra dimension and weight to them. And I, I like the way that that's looking. I like the way that the core of the apple kind of nestles into the circular pieces as well. And I think that's really cute. I'm going to take my twine and I'm going to staple it off to the edge of the paper on uh, 
I think I staple both ends, but I'm, I am tying it in a knot on each end so that it doesn't unravel. You don't have to do that. You could definitely just put a little glue on it and it would keep it from unraveling. But I'm, I'm just playing with the placement of the twine and I don't normally staple off both ends um, at the beginning, but in this case it was laying kind of nicely in an arc. So I went ahead and thought, oh, I'll just go ahead and staple it and that's gonna keep it in place for me. And then I am going to just start layering up my little flag pieces here, uh, my little triangles. And I'm just trying to layer them so they're not the same exact color right next to each other, just so that it gives lots of interest and design, um, or not design, <laughs> interest and um, definition between all of those pieces. And I think that looks really cute. I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way that that looks. And then I am using the twine to kind of be the the line where it goes and you're not going to see any of the twine except for the two ends of it when it, everything is said and done because the twine gets covered by all of these pieces and that is giving it a little added dimension also because the twine is a little bit thick it's, it's not real thick but it's um, thick enough to give a little pop to the tops of these banners and i think that looks really cute now i'm going to use the apples that came uh, with this set and the cores and i'm going to use those as part of my banner design up here in the corner and I'm I'm really I'm really enjoying the way that it's coming out so far I think I had to take a pause there to um, take one of the masking pieces off of the apples there I'm just going to play with them up here figuring out exactly what order I want them in I don't want them where all the cores are next to each other and all the solid apples are next to each other I want to kind of mix it up a little bit and that um and the, then the apples are different sizes as well. So I wanted to take that into consideration while I was placing these and figuring out exactly where I want them. I'm liking how this is coming together. Um, the small apple kind of uh, is a nice little break between the two larger apples. And then I'm uh, just placing this bottom piece once I get my flare popped down with a little bit of um, glue dots or zots. I, I don't know which one I happen to be using because I use them interchangeably, but uh, either the Zots or glue dots are what I would use to adhere my flare. Now, all of the wood pieces are adhesive backed, so you don't have to add any um, adhesive to that. That is it, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Check the playlist down below to go and see what everyone else is doing for Follow a Sketch February. Don't forget to go and give Sandy a little bit of love for uh, putting this series together. Um, thank you, Sandy, for doing this. It was amazing. Uh, as many times as I was able to play along, I've really enjoyed it. I'll see you guys again soon with another video. Bye-bye.